For this question, we have to give the reaction conditions. So that's quite interesting. We need to mention things like temperature, catalyst, all of those weird things that, um, that, that we've learned about for different reaction conditions, okay? Now, your textbook might say slightly different things to what I'm going to be saying. Um, your teacher might say slightly different things, but I'm just going to give as much as I can, and then you can just take from it what you want, okay? Like, even in the final examinations, they don't, sometimes don't expect you to say everything, but I'm just going to try to be as thorough as possible, um, and then you can just adapt to what, to, to, to what your teacher is saying and things like that. Okay, so we need to try to get an idea of what's happening here. So here we have an alkene. Okay, um, and, and, and what happens is that we are adding this HCl to the alkene. So maybe the, this hydrogen here would end up going over there, and then the Cl would be going over there, and that's how we can see the product. Okay, so this is an alkene being converted into a halo alkane. So when you're studying at home, you should just know alkene going to halo alkane, and then you should just try to have your reaction conditions for that one. There's about 12, I would say 12 reactions that we have in total, and you just need to memorize the reaction conditions, okay? So for this one, it is typically, yeah, we don't want to have any water present. So we'll just say that the dry... Okay, now sometimes another word for dry is um, anhydrous. So your teacher might use that word. Anhydrous means no water present. So there's you take the dry HCl and you add it directly to the alkene. So you say added directly to the alkene. So they, you just add these two things together, okay? There's no other real special conditions. There's no catalyst. You don't need to use special heating techniques. You're just going to add them together. Okay, so that's one of the easier ones.